Chapter 11 of Claude Lightfoot, or How the Problem Was Solved, by Father Francis Finn. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 11 In Which Claude Makes His Escape. There was courage in Claude's flashing eyes, determination in his set face. Though the mouth was partially open to relieve his heavy breathing, he looked neither at cigar nor at oil can, but kept his eyes fixed steadily upon the three who had turned ashen pale. Not one of them moved, not one of them uttered a word. It was as though all had been gorgonized. What do you wish? Worden finally gasped, for the steady eye of Claude had cowed him, and he feared, in the ignorance of his heart, that any imprudence on his part would be the signal for an explosion, followed by the burning of his father's stable. None of these three ruffians was at all familiar with chemistry. I give you fellows one minute to go down there on the lawn and stand where I can see you from that window. Come on, fellows, or I'll never hear the end of this, said Worden, still in a whisper. Claude moved not till they were out of the room. Then, as the last one disappeared, he arose, put the cigar in his mouth, and puffed at it vigorously. He was not done with it yet, and it would not serve his purpose were the light to go out. Claude, like Worden, was of opinion that a lighted cigar dropped upon coal oil would produce an instantaneous blaze. He walked over to the window, this small boy, still puffing away at the cigar. A passerby looking up would have laughed. The innocent young face and the burning cigar looked so incongruous. But the three rowdies, as they came upon the lawn and stared up at the window, did not laugh, for they now knew that it was possible to hold a small boy in respect. Claude, as he blew out clouds of smoke, took in the situation. The stable faced upon an alley near 13th Street and running up to 14th, i'll keep this cigar lighted said claude as he removed it from his mouth tell you fellows go up that alley as far as fourteenth street and you'd better hurry too for i'm in dead earnest and don't dare turn your heads on the way as though they had been his slaves the three hurried out of the yard into the alley and ran in the direction indicated as though their lives depended upon it as they went through the gate Claude clattered down the stairway, and gaining the alley, set off at the top of his speed for 13th Street. He did not succeed as well as he had hoped, for before he had reached the street, his enemies, who had gained the corner of 14th, turned just in time to see him. With a loud cry, they started in pursuit. Poor Claude! His race had cost him dear. His right leg refused to stand further strain and he could hear the sharp footfalls of his pursuers as they clattered up the alley. Further running was out of the question. He looked about him. At his side was a lawn, back of which rose a handsome residence. Without a moment's hesitation, Claude hobbled in by the open gateway, made the porch with difficulty, and crawling under it, lay quiet till he heard his pursuers turn the corner in full cry and dash up the street. He had no small trouble in emerging from his hiding place, and with much pain and labor, picking his way by every odd and end that could yield him support, he walked, or rather crawled, to the kitchen and knocked. Come in, said a voice. The door opened, and the cook raised her hands in horror as she saw a small boy, his clothes covered with dirt, his face bleeding and very pale, standing hatless and in an attitude of entreaty at the door. Then she gave a cry as the little figure toppled over, face foremost, and lay still and senseless upon the floor. Claude had fainted from pain. End of chapter 11